Hello, everybody. My name is Catlick, and uh, yeah, we're going to be running RE8, RE Village, whichever you wish to call it. And with me on commentary today is Captain Ezekiel and Niddle, if you guys want to introduce yourselves. Hi. Hi. I'm Captain Ezekiel. Hi, I'm Niddle. We're going to be doing new game glitchless on casual. Uh, and we're going to start the run in three, two, one, go. Good luck. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So the first addition to uh, Resident Evil 8 that RE7 didn't She's have is cutscene skip. Woohoo! She snarled. Hi, Mia. Bye, Mia. <laughs> Definitely the Imagine better of quality of life changes. Like, especially when it comes to speedrunning, is the ability to skip cutscenes. It's, Imagine it's a 15 definitely... minute intro. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine. Like two Imagine two and a half minutes before you can even do anything. <laughs> yeah, so that's one nice thing with Village, uh, is definitely Almost getting to there, skip right? the cutscenes. Uh, unfortunately, we still have a little bit of a long intro uh, with the very slow walking which is fine. Uh, it's just the one part where we get to go into Winter Wonderland and, uh, you know, walk at a snail's pace. It's, it gives me Resident Evil 7... <laughs> Resident Evil 7 vibes of just sitting around and waiting. <laughs> All right. But at least with new things that came up with this run, uh, before there used to be a thing called Snow Walk. We no longer do snow walk anymore. Uh, if you don't know what that is, it's, it's fine. It's basically something that caused carpal tunnel. <laughs> uh, basically spamming W to make yourself go faster in this section. Uh, we decided uh, as a community to get rid of it just because it, it, it was going to cause more problems and we wanted to keep the run fun and not have to worry about people, you know, breaking their wrists <laughs> for a world record. <laughs> Yeah, snow walk was was brutal when it was found. It was it was discovered that I think it's at like a certain BPM. I can't remember if it was like hundred and thirty or something like that. But if you if you rhythmically tap W, you'll uh, you'll stop and restart Ethan's running animation, uh, which actually speeds it up pretty tremendously. It's like a thirty or twenty five second time save if you did it perfectly all the way from here to the uh, house. And with resetting this game, that's a that's a finger breaker for sure. Like you do two resets and you're out. You're tapped out. <sighs> Oh, oh, oh no, oh no, oh no, yeah. one, oh no, one second. One second. Oh, oh come on, Gabe. <laughs> Give me a moment. Did Speaking of resets. <laughs> uh, my game. Oh, oh, no, we're good. We're good. We're fine. We're not fine. Never mind. Hold on. I'm going to wait. We were just talking about it. Too. Yeah. Our uh no it's fine <laughs> there's there's these issue with village recently that all the runners are feeling we're not quite sure what capcom did but some patch did something where the game is in incredibly unstable at certain points and it's always the same points it feels like like that freeze catch just had right there i've had like twice as well um where the game it drops frames and sometimes it just drops a tremendous amount of frames and it locks up like that it actually locks up your whole computer and it's yeah, like it's ridiculous. like everything, everything freezes. It basically it just crashes your computer almost, which is, I don't know what they did or what's causing it. It's very unfortunate, but uh, thankfully we got it at the beginning and it doesn't happen again. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can live with, uh, I can live with one stutter. Just uh, please no PC crashes. I was I was complaining about that earlier. I was like, all I want is the game to just not crash. <laughs> uh, oh, hey, Ethan, that's a nice hand you got there. <clears throat> would that be a would shame be a, if something were to a, <laughs> Yeah, it would be a shame if uh, something bad happened to that hand of yours, buddy. <laughs> All right, so we're still going to be walking at a little bit of a snail's pace here uh, until we finally get out of this house. Basically, it's just this spooky, scary basement. Ooh, what could happen? Ooh, what's in here? Why would we check this? I have no idea, but hey, there's a rat. <laughs> so they could hit you with the jump scare. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is a small jump scare central in here. Yeah. Wouldn't really be uh, an RE game without an intro like this. Yeah, the slow-paced walking intro always kind of sets it up for for uh, for the spooky. Um, yeah. 
It's kind of interesting. You can skip that little uh, animation, the jump scare where the roof collapses in on uh, New Game Plus. I don't, I don't think anybody's ever done it on New Game, have they? Uh, I think people were trying when the game first released. We were trying to figure out if we could skip that on New Game, but it just was super inconsistent and... Yeah, yeah, there's one person wanted. who showed a video of it, and it, it got replicated one time by timing a quick turn and taking the most perfect line you've ever seen in your life to be able to get it, but I've never been able to recreate it. Yeah. And right. retries. Retries, yeah. So uh, if one of you would like Where to explain retries, go I? for it. Yeah, yeah. that's all you need. Uh, yeah, so uh, similar to RE7, actually. Uh, there, there are certain points where the game will make a checkpoint, and the checkpoint that it makes is actually sort of further along or in a different spot from where you actually are. So uh, in a few spots, we can retry to uh, actually put ourselves at that at that later point. And since since it made the checkpoint and our position has changed, we can actually save a few seconds. Uh, some are bigger than others, I would say. There's some like micro ones that. I know Zeke does for world record purposes that I don't even know if my hard drive can load the game fast enough because <laughs> those are definitely hard drive dependent. Um, yeah. Yeah. There, there's some like 0 0.1, 0 0.2 time saves, but uh, the, the one that Kat just did is probably like three or four seconds. It's it's decent. Yeah, it's, it's probably the biggest one I would imagine. Yeah. The Moreau one is also kind of big. Ah. Oh. Unlucky. <laughs> Mr. Grabby hands. My goodness. I it. All right, well, <laughs> the game is just really trying to kick me down. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. We have to take damage anyways, because uh, in this section, we will be taking purpose damage, as in uh, we we're basically going to let things just beat on us. Uh, there is a thing called D8 in this game. Uh, what is that? That is difficulty adjustment. Essentially, what it does is that the better you do, the harder the game gets. The e the worse you do, the easier the game gets. Yeah. Uh, so the game sort of, if you take damage, if you're uh, not playing so hot, if you die, uh, the game will actually uh, make enemies easier, basically on a scale. There's like sort of a background number. And uh, we manipulate that in this first section, especially to sort of set ourselves up with a low DA. So that way everything is easier. We can kill some bosses faster. Um, and this is the lovely Lycan raid. Uh, Zeke, take it away, dude. Yeah, so the Lycan Siege. Okay. Uh, the Lycan <laughs> Siege is a very uh, interesting, uh, one of the most complex parts of the game. I would argue the most complex part of the game that took us a long time to figure out. It kind of happened in waves. So the Lycan Siege is, is a time manipulatable event where basically um, if you try to cheese the Lycan Siege by like standing, uh, sitting on a ladder, for example, it actually pauses the timer of the siege. You have to continue. You have to be outside of a house and you have to be running around for the game to like progress time here. Uh, yeah. And it's, it's pretty not forgiving in that regard because we all tried to cheese it for the longest time. Oh yeah. I thought we had something with the stairs or the ladder for a while, and I was like, oh, wow, this is great. We can just sit here. No. <laughs> no. Yeah. Uh, it was actually pretty uh, fun how we found out about DA in this game. Uh, Zeke and I were, you know, we were labbing out the game, and for some reason I got through the siege a lot quicker than he did, and we realized that I was taking more damage, uh, which was very odd, but yeah, it, it that's... Are you gonna buy me? Buy me? Buy me? Buy me? Yeah, these are. Yeah. Um, yeah. Go ahead. Oh yeah, so these all these lichens are on hit timers. So uh, right. every other hit should be a grab, um, and each lichen has its own set timer. So you're operating on like a global lichen hit timer and an individual lichen hit timer. That's why like you'll get grabs and sometimes you'll just get hit and it's just damage. And basically what Kat's doing is she's just getting herself low as possible, waiting for a. Uh, a very uh, handsome lichen named Urias to spawn. Um, and when Urias spawns, it means part two of the lichen siege is happening, and that's when oh, Kat's yes. gonna go uh, get ready to make some heals. Because unique to RE8, that isn't in the other titles, is healing yourself reduces your DA by a dramatic amount. It's the most oh, yeah. that you can get. It's like 200 plus. Yeah, it's pretty crazy how much it uh, dumbs down your DA. Are you gonna... Yeah. In RE7, actually, it didn't 
it, there was no there there was DA, but uh, healing didn't affect it at all, which was kind of weird when we discovered in Village that healing like slam dunks your whole DA. So by the end of the Lycan raid, for the most part, most people are at basically zero DA, which means that we could get. I don't know, like 30% through the game while on the lowest rank. So enemies are easier, uh, bosses have a lot less shots to kill. Um, basically sets us up for Moreau way early on is, is what we're doing. Yeah. Unfortunately, because of that stutter, uh, my timing on the Lycan Siege is going to be all sorts of wonky because apparently <laughs> I am uh, down 24 seconds. <laughs> yeah, oh, no. the stutter, the stutters are, when, when it locks up like that, the timer will like try to catch up and it'll zoom ahead by like 20 seconds, but you will still be in the same spot because it'll freeze. So. Yeah. Right. Um, the the in-game time uh, I should mention. So uh, Capcom couldn't really provide us with a working timer. So fortunately, the wonderful people who made the auto splitter and the load remover, uh, that's how the run is timed on PC. It's uh, basically cutscenes and load time doesn't count. Um, you stop killing everything. Urius. <laughs> yeah, so, and <laughs> also worth mentioning, Urius killing enemies raises your DA. So the game thinks that Ethan is, like, super good at the game because <laughs> Urius is obliterating these dudes. Yeah. And there that's the Lycan Siege. Uh, Arrow to Dany. A lot of it is just waiting around for hugs and uh, hoping here? that the Lycans will cooperate and give you that. But <laughs> sometimes they just like to sit and stare at you for a while, and you're like, "Can you just, uh, <laughs> can you just do damage to me? Just hit me, hit me one more time, one more time." <laughs> All right. It's pretty good. I mean, your DA has got to be super low. Uh, well, one thing about uh, DA um, is that DA operates in ranks. So there's there's a set DA number which uh, in casual goes from 0 to 1999, and then ranks are dependent on the 1,000 mark threshold you meet between. And uh, each per each level you're lower, like 0 being the lowest, increases your damage dealt uh, and reduces enemy damage dealt. Uh, it, however, does not affect health pools. It's a common misconception is that people think that DA changes health, but it doesn't. It only changes your damage. Uh, which is why in Village of Shadows, it's at DA like 18 or something ridiculous. And I mean, it's like 8,000 or something like that. So there's no point in changing the DA yeah. at that. It's, it's basically kind of like a new game professional for RE4 where it's just, it's not more consistent, but you know, DA is just, it's at a flat rate. So you might as well not even mess around with the DA at that point for RE8 anyways. Or RE4, it's just a static DA at professional. Mm -hmm. Anyways. Yep. Oh, there you go. Hug time. <laughs> Whee! All right. So many hugs. I know. I'm just very fond of the hugs. All right, so we're going to grab this uh, key here. Oh, pausing, we should explain that too. With that oh, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, so the reason why I pause on drawers opening is because the game is trying to load in the item. So pausing the menu, like pausing to the menu allows the item to load in and you can grab it a lot faster. Whereas if you weren't to pause the game, you'd have to wait for the drawer to essentially open all the way and then the item will come up. Mm -hmm. This yeah. also isn't simply uh, this. This isn't unique to items. It's also uh, something you'll see in elevators. Capcom did a thing with this game where they hid load times. Uh, smart, smartly so. This is how you should do it. Is elevators when you're going up and down in this game? Certain elevators are actually loading in areas, so it'll take longer if you're loading slower. Um, but we pause the elevators to kind of bypass this and not lose time for it. Um, yeah, it kind of it's kind of the same logic that's applied to like opening up items and getting them out by pausing, so the game can just load it faster. Yeah. <laughs> There's also some uh, menus. Oh. I guess this leads to the castle. There's also some menus that are uh, they load a lot slower. Uh, specifically, like door menus. There's only I think one door menu that takes a while, so you have to like pause to let it load, and then you can open the menu. Uh, because sometimes it will take a while to load the items in the menu for some reason. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's weird. Hey, you had good crest RNG, though. It was, it was all right. It was all right. Got a little too close to the door there, but it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it is a shame you can skip cutscenes in this game only for this cutscene. 
This is the greatest cutscene ever. But it's a this shame we my, have to skip it. My wrist resting cutscene. Such a good one. This is basically if you haven't He's played Ari Village. This is where you get introduced to all the lords, like Moreau, Donna, uh, Lady Dimitrescu, and Heisenberg. And it's such a good cutscene. It's yeah, it's it's definitely there's two cutscenes in this game that I usually uh, allow to play through, not all the way to the end, but for a little bit, just because a I like them and b my wrists are terrible. <laughs> so that one is uh, definitely one of my favorites for sure, because you just get to see all the all the cast of characters. The uh, the behind the scenes for how they did the mocap on that scene is is also great because you get to see. Uh, sort of like their exaggerated movements were translated pretty perfectly to the in-game models. Yeah. So you, it's, it's it's pretty, uh, you know, Angie, cartoony. Uh, Paul Roach, uh, Angie's, like, the mocap for Angie is just so funny because <laughs> she's trying to replicate the doll's movement, but, like, also pretend to be very, very short. Yeah. Ah, so funny. You're you're hilarious, Heisenberg. <laughs> what a fun joke. <laughs> this this game has some of like the best voice acting I have ever experienced. It's so if you haven't played this casually, you're doing yourself a disservice. You really should cuz it's like some of the highest quality just video game I've ever seen <laughs> ever. It's so good. Like there's a reason there's so many cutscenes cuz they're just also like they're like movie quality. Yeah, very quotable too. Oh yeah. Yeah, the, the voice actors uh, and actresses all did a fantastic job, and they're all super sweet too. Uh, Niddle, Zeke, and I all uh, actually got to do a race once with some of the voice actresses uh, commenting while we were doing a race, as well as with uh, Marforia. Um, that was a really good time and really cool to get some insight on how the game was, you know, created on their on their view of things and stuff. And it was just a really cool experience. But yeah, the voice actors for this game are all really good people. Definitely. <laughs> all right, now it's time for Castle for the tall lady. The moment we've all been waiting for. <laughs> Rose be here. Big vampire. Big queen. We love her. Here, she has some... Everybody yeah. wanted this section to be like 90% of the game, right? <laughs> yeah, that's what we were all hoping for. We were all hoping for just nothing but tall ladies and, you yeah. know, vampire queens. But uh, unfortunately, that that ends pretty quickly. But it's okay. We also get, you know, Heisenberg, Moreau, Donna, Angie. Yeah. Oh, and if you're watching, you're soon learn. Capcom hates Ethan's hands. <laughs> yeah. They hate his hands. I don't know what it is about Ethan's hands, but they just have a grudge against his hands. Like, every two seconds, they're doing something terrible to his hands. Yeah, like, the first 30 minutes of this game, his, he, like, goes through some serious hand trauma. But don't worry, he has his pixie juice to help him out. Yep, got some dumb pickle do. juice. <laughs> I like how we all have our own different name for it. <laughs> yeah, call I, it I call Dew. it pixie juice. Yeah, I call it Mountain Dew. It's, I call Mountain it pickle Dew? juice. <laughs> pickle juice. Delicious. Mmm, pickle juice. Mmm, <laughs> yummy. <laughs> Delicious. Oh, hey, look, rats. Yeah, so the, a lot of the castle is a, just a big portion of point A to point B. Grab this item, go here place that item, go grab another item, shoot some stuff, you know, the normal things you'd do in a castle, right? Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. <laughs> uh, I would say a lot of the puzzles in this, usually it's like you don't really need to go too far to get the puzzle item, which is which is actually really convenient, you know. So in, in most cases, if you reach a door that is locked, you probably already have the key to it if you're at that point, you know. So uh, we grab the maroon eye, and now we're just going to, pop it right in here, because where else would you put it? Yeah. And, uh... <laughs> oh, really? String you up. Slice your jugular and just watch. Chicken alive, dead, which would you prefer? I think uh, alive would be nice. <clears throat> yeah, maybe. This is... <laughs> So this is the, these are the daughters. If you're not... If you don't follow the story, if you're not familiar with it, this is one of the Dimitrescu daughters. 
The idea of the whole castle, the whole objective is... Hold. Oh. Tall lady. Hi, tall lady. Bye, tall lady. <laughs> okay, carry on. <laughs> <laughs> That's Lady Dimitrescu. You have we to basically her. the idea is we have to get through all the daughters to eventually get to Alcina, which takes a a good amount of time uh, getting through all this. But each daughter uh, is different in the way you do the fights, uh, and you'll be seeing Cat coming up to one of them uh, very shortly. Uh, uh, blink and you'll miss it. You will miss it if you blink. Which one is this one? This isn't a. Is this Bella? I think it's Bella. Yeah. I think the first one's Bella, and then it's uh, Daniela, and then Cassandra. Or something like that. You know what's annoying? I just looked this up like like not an hour ago or like two hours ago before this run, and I totally forgot the order of the uh, daughters. The only yeah, way I you can forget. identify is by their gem on their neck. I think. Yeah. Yeah. And their hair color. Oh caused yeah, that all too. All this mess. I can't believe Cassandra caused all this mess either. Crazy. All right, you die. <laughs> And that's, uh, that's Bella. Ooh. We shoot, uh, so the reason why I shoot her at the end there as soon as she stops moving is it does open the door quicker. If you don't shoot her as soon as she stops moving, the wait time on the door can be a little bit longer. Yep. That was like, oh, I was so certain I was being trolled by everyone when they, when they were like, yeah, just shoot the stone and it breaks the stone faster. I'm like, aha, good one, guys. For the longest time. And it turns out it's true. If you shoot the daughters when they turn to stone, it will actually break them earlier. Yeah. And that mm -hmm. works for all three of them, actually. Yep. All right. Yeah. There's another pause buffer for the key. Um, yeah. Anything, basically anything you have to get into that opens, uh, yeah. you usually want a pause buffer for it. You want the tour? No. Hmm. No tour. <laughs> that shotgun shot there is actually interesting. When uh, when I when I first found that, uh, we didn't think you could do that because you, you can't actually damage the daughters uh, at all unless you're in no. a fight and you like expose them with cold air. Uh, but it turns out if you shoot a daughter, uh, I, I did it out of frustration because I just wanted to find a way to get through her. <laughs> and it turns out if you shoot them, they actually like spread out very slightly. They kind of like it, like turn into flies a little bit and actually lets you run straight through them. And that was perfect for that scenario there. Yeah, it uh, at least helps get you through that door a lot faster just because you do have to do a bit of a... It, it, basically, if you don't shoot her, she can grab you and that can get really annoying and obviously cause a lot of time loss. So we... We usually just shoot for good measure. She's the, uh, Danielle's the FPS destroyer right there. Because if you get grabbed by her and the flies are there, your computer is going to have like a heart attack. Yeah. All right. What the Five more basement. You got this. Cat's yeah. basically going to go through this and aim to shoot these bodies that are under the water. Um, she hits that first one because if you shoot them, the bodies become intangible and you can walk through them. But they're really hard to hit, as you can see. <clears throat> and another tech also used in RE7, uh, FPS. So uh, when we lower the FPS to 30, when we limit it to 30, uh, it actually makes Ethan kind of slippery. His hitbox becomes a lot uh, a, a lot more slippery. We, we like to say he was dipped in a vat of butter. Uh, <laughs> that was that, That's what was popularized as the equivalent. Uh, but yeah, all you need to know is 30 FPS will allow you to uh, get past enemies. Yeah, basically if you're in a really tight spot right. where the, an enemy's body blocking you, you can simply just do a 30 FPS and you squeeze right through. Yeah. Very simple. It's a fun party trick you could try. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really nice. Funnily enough, the only thing it doesn't work out in this game is actually Lady D herself. She, there's something about her assets that make her really hard to squeeze around. <laughs> Yeah, there's uh she she has a few moments. Uh sometimes you can use 30 FPS to squeeze by her, but she 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 likes to make it a little bit difficult. Yeah. So we're going to do a retry here because we we don't want to wait for the door to open. So we just want it to be open now. And there we go. Uh we use that for certain doors. Some doors allows you to do that, some doors not so much. All right, hello Lady D. I'm going to go around. Thank you. Oh, Ethan lost Grab his hand. Grab my again, hand. Guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Missed the cutscene, but he lost his hand. The way it happens is like an anime, like 
samurai slice where it gets cut off, but there's like that three second delay. Oh. Are you kidding me? Oh no. Not again. It always happens here too. Yeah, right? It's I've this, had it here, this actually. spot too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah one second. <laughs> I don't, Still with us, I don't know why this is happening now. When I was practicing, it was fine. Okay, cool. That's very, oh, very fun. Thanks, Lady D. Off of my head. I'm about to lose my head right now if you kill me here. Turn back. Oh, no. <laughs> Unlucky. Can I? No. That's... Very frustrating. Uh, one second. I don't even think I can get by her here, can I? Excuse me. There you go. I, I apologize, everybody. That's, uh, that usually Just doesn't happen. Just Capcom things, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, that usually does not happen. Just I an extension being. of what we saw at the beginning, where, like, that spot is also, like, it's, it's not even a joke when I say that identically, that exact same spot has happened to me as well. That's starting running the game these last this last month or two. It's it's uh, it, I, it's we not don't know why. There's like nothing you can do about yeah. it. Basically, it's a reset if it happens, which sucks. That is true. Yep. And yes, uh, uh, like we were saying with the uh, live split, so the way the run is timed, uh, we use uh, the load removed IGT for whatever reason. Uh, the game doesn't come up as loading or any sort of like pause state for the for the timer so that does waste time on live split mm -hmm. um, yeah it really does it's honestly that that one right there alone lost me 20 seconds yeah like little, it, it can get really bad like that yeah. uh when it does happen that's the second time it's happened hopefully it doesn't happen again it seems it might to be, be the most prominent at the early point of the game like castle and before is where i typically see it the most um, so I'm praying for getting you. a little bit of a micro stutter. I might have to close some things or change something. Two, three, four, five, yeah. six, seven. Nice. Right. Piano oh. master. I love this song. Ding. Do you like it because it's short and then, yes. then it's over and then we're out of here? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Not Moonlight Sonata, but it'll do the trick. Yeah. Well, there's all these pianos uh, in RE7, and we never get to play them. I know, right? Excuse me, ma'am. So this is Daniela. That, uh, it's our second l l little daughter here. So you, you can't be serious. I am serious, actually. A dream. This is a dream. Nice. Easy peasy. Uh, yeah. Right. Uh, blink and you'll miss her and she's gone. Uh, we're gonna shoot her when she stops, right about there. Get through the door and we're Perfect. done. Yeah, she she has uh, that big wavy dress and fortunately it all counts as a hitbox, even though realistically her legs are, you know, probably only a small portion of that. So uh, the trick with her is you just kind of crouch and blast and she always goes down before your last shotgun shot, assuming you're hitting her. <laughs> that was actually a really okay. fast uh, bell room. Bells, yeah. yeah, that's good. Yeah. That is so much harder than it looks, guys. I don't think you understand fully how <laughs> awful that room is. Yeah, the global cycles, dude. Yeah, it, it's global cycles, and uh, the hitboxes are questionable at best. Yep. Yeah, that it's especially the swinging bell. It will either be exactly where you need it to be, or it just it just swings forever into nowhere. Yeah. Or the half swing where it goes up like it's going all the way and then it just comes back down. Yeah. Yeah. So similar to the last one, just blasting. <laughs> the uh, yep. the lore behind this, in case you guys are aware, is they're basically made out of like bot flies. The the daughters are, and the flies basically just hold them together. And when you introduce cold air, it kind of makes them leave. And then you can shoot them. Crazy witch. Yep. Yeah. So that's why sometimes you'll see us shooting windows or shooting uh, or breaking open doors or walls so that way the cold air basically kills them. All right. Excuse me, Lady D. My favorite line. Die of bloodline of how Stomatresk is done in by the likes of you. <laughs> the banger line is so good. I love that line so much. It's the best line. 
<laughs> uh, but yeah, so that that's all of the daughters. We finished them all. They're all done for. Uh, Lady D is very upset. Fair enough. I would be too. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so now we're going to go grab our sniper. I did a little bit of menuing beforehand, so that way we can easy grab the sniper and not have to do any tricky menuing there. Uh, because if you do not have space in your inventory, the game will not auto Tetris. You have to Tetris it yourself. Uh, so it will pause the game and be like, hey, you don't have space for this. Would you like to make space? And you're like, well then, I guess I have no choice. <laughs> Uh, so I do a little bit of menuing beforehand to not have that happen because a pop-up will come up and it just wastes a lot of time. Yeah, coming from... Because all three of us come from RE7 and we they, one of the biggest hurdles and adjustments was the inventory in this game. So we routed it in a way so we just almost never have to go in there because it is... The RE8 inventory um, casually is fine, but when you're trying to speedrun, it's very counterintuitive. Uh, I, I, like Kat said, it doesn't auto Tetris for you. The confirmation key bindings are don't really make sense. And if you do pick something up that would fill your inventory and it doesn't let you do it, you have to not only read Tetris, but you have like two separate inventory screens to do it with. And it's very slow and clunky. So um, yeah, that's why doing that inventory that she did earlier is actually going to set her up for the entire run. So she doesn't have to worry about it later. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Definitely closer to the RE4 inventory than the RE7, um, where RE7, yeah. we can just inventory during downtime, but this is like, you know, it's guaranteed time loss every time you have to look at your inventory. Nice one. Whew, that was, I always get nervous about that one. That one's hard. So how do you guys remember the masks here? Scooty Pub Jr. Uh, Scooty Pub Jr., right? Yep. I just remember going two up at all, all two up and three up. Oh, some, see, some of them. You're too. That's too logical. <laughs> you have to come up with a ridiculous acronym that's almost as hard to remember as the actual order. <laughs> I used to struggle remembering it until I heard Niddle say Scooty Puff Jr. I'm like, that is brilliant. Because <laughs> it's S P J R, right? <laughs> it just got me good. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I just remember it by muscle memory at this point. <laughs> See, cat, cat's smart. I'm out here like we don't got time for that. Scooty Pub crazy Jr. mnemonics. So yeah. <laughs> All right. So I'm gonna take out my sniper here so we can use it for Lady D. Yes. Looks like you're outside. All right. Time for Lady D. So Lady D is pretty simple. We're just gonna shoot her there so she goes into the air quicker. We're gonna make this gate go up so we can grab the items that we need behind the gate. So Lady D continues going into a circle here. So we're gonna wait for her to come over here and shoot her about three or four times to bring her health down. Yep. Yeah, this fight is relatively scripted in terms of what Lady D does during her phases, but it's sort of important that we get her to specific health thresholds for her to go to her next phase. Um, yeah. So yeah, there's and, a bit of a setup here. Yeah, and so I'm going to be using these two pipe bombs real quick after she breaks down this wall and she's about to go fly. I'm going to do them very, very quickly and then shoot her with the sniper to get the optimal amount of damage. This is one of those fights where the addition of the speedrunning tools made this much better. Without mm -hmm. knowing her health values and what was going on in this fight would have made this tremendously tremendously more difficult to actually do uh, because we, we learned that when Lady Dimitrescu gets to that halfway point that you saw Kat throw the pipes at her, uh, her health resets um, back to 7,500. Uh, and so throwing the pipes there at that time brings her down to like uh, 3,000 or something uh, or 2,000 and Kat shoots her once to put her at one shot from dead when she goes in the air and finishes it like that. Um, and then it also yeah. helped us start about this phase. Yeah, so this phase we're just going to be waiting until she lands, and then as soon as she says uh, every last morsel is when we start shooting. And that's Lady D. Good job. Nice. Yeah. A lot of the boss fights here, like once you get the consistency down, they're really not that hard. Um, 
Moreau is probably the most finicky out of all of them, I'd say. Maybe sometimes Miranda, but for the most part, a lot of the bosses are uh, pretty like consistent. Nice. It's the in-between stuff that gets a little finicky. Yes, yeah, yeah. definitely. But this is good. This is a good castle altogether. Besides the, the, the stutters, stutters, yes. Yeah. I mean, other than the stutters, yeah. I don't think he really did anything like bad at all. So that was actually pretty good. Yeah, the run's definitely clean so far. So far. Capcom lost you time. You did not lose. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Damn it. That's all good. I'm. Uh, it's all. I'm only a minute behind. <laughs> <laughs> Another pause buffer for the key, and then do you do this one? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So there's a load. You can actually see it in the uh, pause menu, and yeah. if you try to interact with that door, it just makes you wait before it brings up your inventory. It's it's. I don't understand why for that, but it, right? it's the only door that really you have to do that. Besides, every other door is pretty quick. I, I just, I guess it's because it's loading the outside area, this? which is my guess, anyways. But now we're out of the castle, so now we shouldn't have any FPS issues, right? Right? Right. I hope. I hope so. <laughs> right? Copium. I, I hope. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, so now we're going to be heading off to Benviento. Miss yeah. Donna Benviento. But first, we have to go do a few things. AK, we got to go get a jack handle real quick and uh, talk to Duke for a little bit. We love Duke. We Duke's love good. the Duke. The Duke's the boy. He is there perhaps the most are. powerful yeah, of any character in Resident Evil. Yeah, he can appear that's anywhere. What it's to all the time. Yeah, right. He's the true mastermind. Hoping the DLC <laughs> goes into lore with the Duke so you get to see more about him, but uh, oh. there is there is lore that talks about how the Duke is like, none of the Lords mess with him. No one messes with him. He does his own thing. Nice. Jeez, that shot is so <laughs> annoying. Yeah, so there's a lock that I, I was aiming at over there to open a door early. Uh, sometimes that lock, you'll shoot it in one shot, or uh, you shoot it in like five. <laughs> sometimes yep. it's nice, sometimes the hitbox just doesn't play nice, because this gun, unfortunately, if you hip fire, it's everywhere. But even if you're shooting from a distance and you're aiming, it can still be a little shaky. It almost feels like there's a max distance that the bullet will travel, which doesn't really make logical sense, but game universe i guess <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm i i can really relate to the struggles of that lock i've had my history with it and i'm not a fan <laughs> so big pause buffer here for the jack handle and then this guy no problem excuse me door <laughs> door slight problem but door is always a slight problem sometimes <laughs> all right uh so i i intentionally put in all my ammo into the gun there so I can sell the shotgun because at this point we don't use the shotgun anymore. Uh, and we try to make sure we have all the ammo into the shotgun so we don't have any menu problems later on because the shotgun shells will take the inventory space, unfortunately. Uh, we didn't really mention the shotgun and why we keep it at one bullet. Uh, so it's just faster. Uh, I'm assuming some people are probably wondering, like, why aren't you reloading it fully? Because reloading it fully is actually really slow. Like, terribly painfully slow. So we only keep it at one bullet just for that. Yeah, it's faster to load a shell into the gun one at a time than it is to load <laughs> all of the shells and be fully reloaded. That makes sense, right? Better see the duplicate. Totally. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah, and it's, it's not even like a dismissible amount of time. It's about a half second... So like 0.3 to load it individually, but if you load it fully, it's like one second between each shot. It's 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 brutal. How yeah. does it? Map skip. Well done. Map skip. Let's nice. go. Nice. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. So this game, another little silly thing uh, about this game. So that map that pops up there, if you don't look at the map in a previous playthrough or something like that. It will ha it will make you or essentially force you to watch the map load. Uh, but if you've seen it before, before like if you didn't close the game and you've seen it before, it will just quickly close it. I I don't know. It's weird. So now most runners have a save file specifically just for that map. 
<laughs> yeah, you make a save file right before you talk to the Duke for that map interaction, yeah. and then you before you start doing runs for the day, you load the save, you run to the Duke, and then you're ready to go for the rest of the day. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's pretty interesting. Shout out to my uh, or rest in peace to my old keyboard. Before we discovered that. Uh, we thought you had to mash really hard and really fast oh, no. to get through it. And so anytime I get there, I just beat up my keyboard. <laughs> it didn't live very long. And then Spicy, shout out to Spicy, one of the all, also routers and goats of the game, uh, discovered is like, hey guys, just load a file. Just, just load a save file. Yeah. Oh, oh, it's that easy. Oh, okay. <laughs> thanks, thanks, game. Very cool. Very, very this cool. Can't be real. Yeah, so. That's a. It, this game has kind of weird little things about it uh, all over the place. Thankfully, we don't need a save file for every little thing, though. <laughs> <laughs> all right, now to go see Anji. Hopefully, she gives us good RNG. Good RNG. Good RNG. We love Anji. At least I do. I think she's cute. This is, I uh, personally, I, I think a lot of people feel this way. This is one of the coolest sections of the game, just because oh, yeah. it's it's very psychological. It's in your head. It's kind of reminiscent of uh, the Lucas section in RE7. Um, but here's some of that pause buffering to skip elevator load time. And it is a significant amount of time. It's like 10 seconds if you don't pause buffer like this. Yeah, it. you have to basically keep an eye on your FPS while you're doing this. Otherwise, uh, you won't be able to tell if it's the right time to pause it. Basically, if your FPS drops below a certain point, then you want to pause the game quickly, just so the game loads everything. Yep. Uh, but you only usually do that for specific elevators, because some elevators are longer than others, uh, like that one and one later on with Moreau's section. Yeah. So on console or a uh, like a if you just have this game on an HDD like a slow hard drive, uh, th those loads take a long time. And uh, now we're gonna start running in the yeah, house. Us usually we're not allowed to run here. Uh, you'll see the true speed we're supposed to be at. But if you duck your head outside very quickly, you can get the speed of which you would be outside inside the house. Uh, but yeah, normally you're very, very slow in this section. It's basically like RE7 all over again. <laughs> Ethan remembers his old walk speed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Before he got military training. Right? Chris helped him out big time. Yeah. You gotta work on your Got that molasses Ethan. off his shoes. <laughs> <laughs> I think it is mild time down a bit. Yeah. So we're going to be introduced to Angie here first in a second. She's going to have one of the uh, pieces of rose that we want. But she's going to take everything. And I mean everything. Your money, your guns, your, your health items, anything. Anything and everything is all gone. Uh, and then we enter the escape room phase. So this is all this section is, really. It's just a giant escape room. I'm a fan of them, so I'm pretty okay with it. But it's a lot of sequence of puzzles and figuring things out. Yeah, it's a yeah. lot of fun. It, it's a, it's really nice, and it sets the tone for like what the atmosphere is meant to be like uh, story wise for the game. Because when you walk through this whole area, you see a lot of stuff referencing like Mia and like what what what's happening and like how they got to like this point, and it really like sheds some light on like the mental state of the characters. And it's like it's pretty heavy stuff if you really pay attention to everything. Um, yeah. But this is speed run. We're not doing that at all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Casually, this this section uh, like sort of opens up a lot of questions that you know you wouldn't have had up till now. Uh, in the speed run, we're just kind of mashing through these puzzles, though. Yeah, the, and all the puzzles are preset. Like there no, there's no RNG to the puzzles. It's right. the same set uh, every single time. So bless that because muscle memory uh, tech tends to just take over here. However, uh, yeah, you can, if, if it, oh my God, if it were RNG though, I'm just thinking about that oh, and how no. much I would hate this section. <laughs> yeah. It, so it would it, be very painful. Sort of like the block puzzle in RE2R. We get kind of like two similar puzzles like that where we're sort of just sorting out the order. And fortunately you can kind of just remember it by going like one, two, two, four, three, five. So you, you, you sort of just figure it out and then once you get used to it, it's one of those things where you'll do it without even realizing it, and you're like, oh wow, I didn't 
think I even remembered that. <laughs> oh, yeah. It can be uh, very, very quick once you get used to it. It's yeah. uh, not too bad. All right. The uh, only problem, and I say problem lightly, but I actually mean it heavily, is that these <laughs> this RE7 has this, but it's not nearly as bad. If you misconfirm something, like if you put oh, something no. in the wrong spot, <laughs> if you try to yep. like do the puzzle wrong, um, in RE7, it takes a couple seconds and then you do it again. In this game, they really wanted you to think about what you had done when you put the wrong <laughs> item in the wrong spot and it will lock you out of doing anything for like 10 seconds. Yeah, oh, yeah. Doing it will, it will make sucks. you f it will make you feel bad watching your time tick down. Oh man, it's it happens to everybody. It's the worst when it happens because there's nothing you can do. Uh, it's just sit there, think about it for a while, and then you're like, okay, can I just do the thing? Can I yeah. can I do it now? Can, how about how about how about now? It's now? a big punishment, no? okay. and you're just sitting there mashing your interact key. You're like, please, I know what I did wrong. Like, obviously, I know my <laughs> eight thousandth playthrough. Please, it's especially, especially on this doll yeah. because the uh, the hit boxes for yeah. the mouth, the eye, and the chest are so close together that it can be very very easy to click on the wrong one. Yeah. It's not. It's not fun when it happens. Mm -hmm. But no drama there. Cat. Cat did that perfectly. Come on, oh, man. Uh -oh. Um, dude, did I Capcom. jinx it? Am I? Am I that bad? No, Please, you're fine. Capcom. <sighs> I might be overestimate. <laughs> it's funny. I've had it here and the Moreau section. I think it. At worst. There you go. Oof. It's okay. We. Come on. Business as usual. My Village run would definitely things. get denied. <laughs> yeah. I don't look to uh, submit this anyways. Uh, not with uh, <laughs> not with the reds we're looking at right now, but it's fine. I <laughs> think it might just the be because I'm, <laughs> I'm. I think it's because I'm streaming into Discord as well, probably. Oh. Yeah, it could definitely That's, be. Yeah, I actually too. opted out of that because because of FPS. Yeah. Uh, I could just lower the quality, if anything, and drop it down to a better quality so my PC doesn't try to eat at it, but I don't know. <laughs> don't know. I, just, I, this is the most I've ever seen it happen. Yeah, it I think me and Zeke true. are like, we could commentate this on sound alone. <laughs> <laughs> true. That is true. <laughs> I, I would... It looks like this uh, happen during Baby Skip. Oh yeah. my god, if it yeah, happens during Baby no. Skip. I did just speak it into uh, existence, so if it does right. happen, you know All you, point. dude. Yeah. So, uh, this is the baby. Perhaps one of the most rememberable, recognizable uh, enemies in the game. Uh, pretty terrifying, first couple times you encounter it. Uh, because of a skip that we're going to be doing later, we will be getting rather up close and personal. Uh, and <laughs> There's uh, about five ways to do right. this skip too. It's kind of absurd. There's like so many different ways. There's like a safe way, an advanced way, an intermediate way. There's there's so many different ways to do this list skip we're about to do coming up. Um, I do it a bit of a safe way. I'm not uh, Zeke over here who just runs into the face of the baby. I'm not. I I'm not that risky yet. <laughs> Yeah, so the the baby does have an insta kill if you come into contact with it, um, which is kind of annoying. The checkpoints are pretty forgiving in this section, so even if even if the worst case scenario happens, it's not too big of a uh, restart. But yeah, so the lights go out and the baby is going to be blocking our path, and, and we, we gotta to... get behind the baby. Yeah. But how are we going to do that? I wonder. Hmm. I'm just gonna wait here. Oh, sure? the baby come come at me! Hey, everybody, want a baby? It's a nice baby. Oh. Look at that baby. It's exactly what babies look like, by the way. It's a bold strategy. Let's see how it pays off. Nice. And there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, baby. Easy. Yeah. Easy peasy. The the baby skip, like Cat said, has gone through like so many different changes, um, and its its discovery was very interesting. Basically, the logic behind that to give you a really short tail DR of it is. Um, the baby has an animation it will enter when it needs to enter a door to like get to Ethan. Um, but if you already have a door open and you like bait a lunge attack, it kind of has to reset itself to get into spot for it, which gives Ethan the time just to run right through past it. Yeah. 
Uh, when this game was first being routed, I remember everybody was debating which, uh, de debating, debate, debating, uh, which is the <laughs> is the is the fastest way to do it. And uh, ultimately, like I would say, between the slowest possible way and the fastest possible way, there's maybe only a couple seconds at most, you know. So it's sort of one of those things where it's like whichever way results in you not dying like most consistently that's the way you should go with yeah absolutely <laughs> yeah uh, because the fastest way to do it doesn't really save you a ton of time it does save you time but nothing uh too crazy i'm gonna actually going to dumb down the uh how do i 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 turn it down uh change quality 30 there you go hopefully nice. that that helps. Yeah, whatever you gotta do. <laughs> Capcom, please. I don't know when that change that introduced these issues came into existence, because I didn't see any patch notes recently, but the game definitely performs different now than it did, like, three or four months ago. Yeah. Yeah. My, and my computer is by no means... It's definitely not a toaster. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I'd reckon it's probably some mixture of a game of the game update or uh, game ready drivers with Nvidia and stuff that probably kind of. I started. did just update my drivers. Mm. Maybe it's Nvidia this entire time. Oh, I too am it. on <laughs> but modern it seems drivers. The, the game seems to be running a lot smoother for me now, so it's good. So this How's is the RNG. Bad RNG. Yeah. Oh. But Angie no. has uh, the very first spawn upstairs that Cat went to is a set spawn. She always starts the fights there. The next two spawns are flipped between being close and far. This one was far, and this next one is also far. Yeah. Uh, it's unlucky. That means in a run sense, this would be an eight-second time loss because she went to the two furthest positions rather than the two closest ones. Yeah, we're just getting a. Uh... Very bad marathon luck today. <laughs> that is how it is, isn't it? <laughs> uh, it's okay. It's about having fun, not about pulling PBs and world records. That's for later. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Somebody needs to mod Kermit over Angie. <laughs> Modders, make it happen. Yeah. So that's who was behind all that. Now we got the leg. Thanks to. All right, don't forget Angie. Yeah. Uh, so Angie is probably the one of the only few boss uh, pieces that we'll pick up that you, we have to actually go out of our way to pick it up because some bosses, the uh, their like item or their crystal or whatever uh, will be available as soon as we get out of the cutscene. Um, like Lady D, for instance. However, for uh, Angie, we have to actually turn around and pick her up. If we forget her, then that messes with a lot of the inventory and items we need for later. Especially since uh, we are going to have to do a little bit of a Duke stop coming up. Now hang out with Duke for a bit. Our boy. The boy. Right. Do, 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 do. When we uh, yeah. when this when this was first being routed, um, I guess we talk a lot about the routing because you're basically looking at the three people who routed the game. <laughs> so when, <Yeah. laughs> when it comes to routing this, uh, the first thing everyone thought about when we played the game casually going into turn is like, all right, how are we gonna not see the Duke as much as possible? Because we going to see the Duke is a time loss every time you do it. So I went through oh, a yeah. lot of revisions. And it took us time to realize certain things like um, pipes, pipe bombs, and mines are the best items in the game. Uh, and the sniper rifle, when fully upgraded, is is like the best weapon, but financially speaking, that you can get in the game. And there was a lot of debate. Uh, there was a ton of debate actually around uh, sniper versus grenade launcher. A lot yep. of people were like, oh, I want to do this, the grenade launcher route. And other people were like, no, I'm going to stick to the sniper route. So there's a lot of debate on which one was faster. Turns out using a bit of both is faster. Remember the Magnum? We used to, there was a point where. Oh, yeah, I remember we were, the Magnum. <laughs> we used to go way out of the way just to pick up the Magnum. And uh, I, I don't think that lasted very long. We were like, wait, this is, this is heckin' slow. And yeah, then. Um, comes, though. Yeah, it does so much damage. It's really fun. We but, do pick it up on hardcore, I believe, but we don't pick it up on casual. Uh, yeah. It's just there's no point. 
when you have everything else at your disposal, like the sniper and the grenade launcher. All right. Has arrived for you. Uh, did I forget to ah, no? Miss Angie. Yeah. Just so first shopping trip, popular, you know. we'll take his whole yeah. stock of pipe bombs and mines, and we're going to upgrade the sniper rifle a bit. Uh, we don't really have to go crazy with upgrading the sniper rifle because we're only going to use it a very small amount in this next section, but it, it's sort of like preemptively doing it for later. Yeah. Uh, we're going to be using it for uh, the sniper for Moreau and a boss a little bit later. We've already met that boss, uh, but we'll see him very, very soon. Oh, okay. Never mind. Okay. <laughs> Bullets phasing through the fence. That's that always good. the strongest fence I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Very cool. Thanks, fence. Well, and we broke that fence in the intro, too, so I don't know who rebuilt it. Uh, the lichens. They're very hard at work. <laughs> it's got to be the yellow tape Resident Evil guy, right? Oh, yeah, the guy that's leaving <laughs> yellow, yellow tape. Yellow tape, dude. The paintings. Yeah, I, I saw him last Halloween. Weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we love yellow tape, dude. <laughs> um, oh, hi, with the, uh, in terms of like the routing and like grenade launcher and stuff, um, kind of actually just walked by the grenade launcher, but we're actually not going to pick it up till later. Um, the route did change a lot between sniper and grenade launcher because we, it, it's not really for anything before or at this current point. The questions really came into play when factory got it, when we had to start worrying about what to do there. Um, cause that's when actually the weapons start to shine is in factory. Factory is like, oh yeah, was the hardest thing to get routed to no longer be awful. Because factory is awful. <laughs> it is so hard <laughs> to just do. Um, even like casually, it was hard to play through. Uh, but in the speed run, we struggled with it bad because the enemy density is very high and things don't die fast. And there's there's also doors. there's just doors that uh, have a lot of lights that we need to shoot off. So now we use the grenade launcher for that. You'll see that very soon uh, when we get to the factory. Um, but yeah, the factory just has a lot of things to think about and a lot of things we need to pick up, look out for, and also make sure the enemies obviously don't hit us all along the way. But sometimes you just have no choice because the game decides you get hit here. <laughs> it's the RE7 ship of RE Village, basically. Yeah. There's a lot of backtracking and annoying stuff. But yeah. now we're trying to find a way out of here, and fortunately, there's a there's a boat parked outside. Let's go! Let's go! I love boat. I'm on a boat. <laughs> All right, so we can just grab that without the enemies really paying us any attention. Thankfully, a lot of the things in this game you can just grab without having any issues. Sometimes they get a little buggy there, but not not really. Yeah. I honestly, with the boat, I thought they were going to do an RE4 with El Delago or, or what, however you pronounce Lago, the yeah. name. Yeah, the Lago. Yeah, I thought I, the I, same thing. I wonder if that wasn't planned and they scrapped it because I think they had a similar idea for RE7 and then they scrapped it because they, it was too ambitious. And they were like, no, nah, we don't want to do it. But I, I wonder... <laughs> I feel like that was like the idea with this section, but then yeah. they're like, nah, something probably came up where it was a little buggy. Yeah. Yeah. Part of me imagines there's one dude who's like stoked about the idea who brings it up every time they're at a meeting for a new RE game. Delago. <laughs> the guys, can we get, a, can we get yeah. a boat boss fight? Please, guys. What was that? They, somebody on that team loves boats. Don't know oh, who, but somebody on that team. It's like, oh, there them. they go again, talking about the boat idea. <laughs> Every RE game, we gotta shoot yeah. them down on this boat idea. All right. So Moreau's angry. <laughs> Moreau's angry, so we're gonna we're gonna run away now. Uh, we shot the yellow tape over there. Uh, that yellow tape guy, so carefully placed uh, to get the bridge down essentially because there is a bridge we have to knock down and we what could either we do it there do? or there's another section to do it but this is just the easier access to it because we can see it Easy immediately to versus uh, hope we hit one of them. Yeah. They're not too hard to hit but it, uh, nah. you, you are kind of on a timer because Moreau will destroy the little dock that you're standing on so it's like, you know, a little, little bit of pressure, not too bad, just an instant death if you go slow. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing too serious. It's fine. Yeah. It's no biggie. And, uh, no worries. Ethan, Ethan also has no fall damage. It's 
the it's the thread that ties Ghostwire to Village. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I keep forgetting how much that game has like no fall damage. Yeah, yeah. So this is uh this is a pretty fun section, casually I would say, but it's it's mostly just running and uh avoiding also a because couple spots. Moreau is the best. He is the best. He is the best. Moreau is the best RE character ever. This uh, this whole section um, kind of has some layers to it in a speedrun sense. Um, when you're when you're really pushing for like record times, um, there's something you need to be aware of of this area is that there's a global timer that you're on to beat the windmill at the end of the section. Uh, where basically you have to be as fast as you possibly can be without ever stopping, and you will hit a a little puzzle here um, that Cat will come to later on a windmill. Uh, it's because you're actually fighting the cycle of it ever uh, from the moment you step into the arena. Basically, it's 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 ridiculous, and it's actually a pretty sizable time loss if you don't get it. Um, obviously, on world record strats. Yeah. So the windmill can either take forever to come at you, or like you know, land, or it takes like no time at all to land. Uh, but doing this section pretty quickly. Oh, you are the best, Moreau. You are very much the best. I'm watching. Yes, I'm watching, honey. You got this. You, you're <laughs> doing so great. I'm right through the dock, actually. It's like based <laughs> right through it. All right, my sniper. We love Muro. Fun oh, fact, Muro shares the voice actor with Lucas from RE7. Same that guy. That blows my mind every single time. Yeah, it's the same I guy. didn't actually know that. That's wild. Yeah, that, talk about range, right? Like, it's crazy. Yeah. That's insane. Uh, da, da, da. Not the only one that's shared with RE7. Uh, Paula Road also is Evelyn in RE7. Mm -hmm. Yes. Who plays Angie? She, now she's play. got some range. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't. I, 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 I could never do a high pitch voice for that long, but bless her. Those Evie laughs, dude. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so creepy. All right, well, that shot decided to be nice for now. <laughs> All right, eh, let's see. In the, is the windmill going to participate or be nice today? Yeah. Yeah. So what is we got to do is there's this windmill. We have to come over here and inspect it, and then we can move uh, this platform out of the way, which will line the ladder up with uh, that and also stop the windmill, I guess, somehow, maybe? Question mark. Yeah, um, <laughs> I don't know. Some weird... It's a Some strange weird mechanism. mechanism. Yeah. And there we go. Ooh, perfect, dude. Perfect timing. It's like Amazing. it knew I was coming. <laughs> yeah. So if sometimes you have to wait like five seconds for that windmill. This is a little bit more, maybe, um, depending oh, on what the cycle is. Sometimes it takes is. forever. Yeah. It's pretty Ooh, bad. Hi, Moreau. It's the saddest Hello. thing, because you'll see the ladder go by right as you finish. You're like, oh, yeah. and you kind of sit there and think about it for a bit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Now we are done with the first half of Moreau section, and now we're going to be moving on to fighting Moreau. But first, Ethan, I just got to let you know that you really need to pick up your weight, okay? Okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, he listened. Wow. He, he listens. He's he's such a good listener. He never listens to me. Yeah, me neither, man. <laughs> Think about Ethan in this game and why I actually love what they did with this character. His he has the like some crazy. Banging one-liners in this game, and they're so funny. I don't yeah. don't know what they were thinking, like, but it's perfect for him. His character like came out amazing in this game. They went with like '80s horror cheese, which is honestly it's a it's an amazing fit. I hope they keep it up. But he he really he's like, oh, now you, I don't want to be fish food. Like it's <laughs> got a lot of stuff on your plate, man. I don't know if now's the time to be coming up with witty one-liners. <laughs> yeah. All right, time for Moreau. You got Here this. You go. Cat's basically going to throw a pipe to start this fight, which staggers Moreau and throws two more behind him to hit an explosive behind him and put him at as close to 11,500 health as possible, put three mines down and force him to walk on it, and he's dead. Nice. When Perfect. can you miss it? Yeah. Um, and it's worth mentioning, I think this is the first point in the run that our DA is now above 1,000. Yep. Yeah. Uh, after killing Moreau, like so, all that setup that we did in Lycan Raid, kind of uh, comes to work 
it here because if, if you're above a thousand that fight is a little bit like you can still get it but you might have to do a couple sniper shots with uh fast reflex time but cat did it perfectly yeah nice job yeah yeah the one thing i was very worried about is the thing that went right and everything else went wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, sometimes it just do be like that. It really do. It works out uh, with the DA thing because actually going into the next section, um, in order to optimally do the fight, we actually need to be above DA1 uh, to kill the next boss that's coming up because of phasing and staggering. But we'll explain how he works when we get to him. But it's, it's just funny that it works out that way. Yeah. It's, it's it's fortunate that it takes so long for your DA to go back above a thousand because we are killing stuff, you know, like between Lady D and the daughters and all that stuff, so. Yeah, and even just shooting things will bring up your DA as well. So if you like shoot, like, I don't know, if you shoot a pig, uh, like these pigs here, if you were to shoot one, your DA will go up. Yeah, because you are a skilled player. Wow, I'm so good. Look, game, <laughs> look at me kill the pig. Shot a harmless pig. Good for you. <laughs> we do not harm the animals in this in this here you bring a uh, video down game. You shoot a pig. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right. Like a good player wouldn't shoot the pig. <laughs> How dare you? Also, Billy. <laughs> we love Billy. Yeah. So All now right. we get the grenade launcher. We're gonna shoot this. Uh... Yes. Oh come on! Oh, that, no, that <laughs> guard door. Yeah. God door, it gets me every time. Sometimes you can squeeze through that door before it closes. Unfortunately, sometimes, it, most times, it's just like, no, we're going to close. Hi, really Billy. hard. <laughs> that is a very hard door to get through. I recently labbed it, and it is not easy <laughs> to do no. at all. Uh, it's just, like, if I were to grab just the grenade launcher, it would have been fine. But yeah, because I need to grab the ammo and the grenade launcher, that door is like most likely 90% going to close on me. So I just wait it out. Yeah. Give it a little bit of a wait time. All right. So now we are making our way to our next boss fight, uh, which is going to be coming up in about a minute or so. But first, we got to get through all these lichens. They're not too happy. They're starting to yell at us. They're going to tell the church. Whoa. Whoa. That was weird. He's never usually there. There's a like a lot of good pickups here. So this is a section where if you're low on sniper ammo for some reason, or um, even pistol ammo, actually, uh, you can just break some of the boxes and, and the pickups are usually pretty good. Sometimes there's some grenade rounds, which aren't necessary, but are helpful. Um, but yeah. yeah, usually we only put focus on picking up the landmine and the sniper ammo. Sometimes yes. I pick up handgun ammo specifically for factory because you do need a little bit of ammo for factory, uh, and I don't really like to be a, a, a risky with that. I think we're pretty good on ammo though, so I don't need to really pick up any. Uh, it's usually if I'm like around only 10 bullets. Yeah. And I'm like, I should probably pick some of that up, huh? Running out of pistol ammo in factory is actually a run killer. It's really, really bad. Um, it's pretty rare, but I, I have had runs die in factory because I managed to run out of ammo and then I have to break the uh, lights and I'm like, I have to knife these. <laughs> yeah, it's very unfortunate when it happens. <laughs> uh, thankfully for, because before we used to use the M11, was it? Uh, yeah. Brain powers, I'm trying to oh remember. God, that was a year ago, holy. I think it started we used to off use... with the, uh, the TAC. We used to use shoot the tack shotgun uh, hip fire spread to hit as many lights as we could before switching to the uh, to the Lenny must be the to shoot man. the rest of the lights. And then after that, we started using pipe bombs for it. <laughs> <laughs> Even though pipe bombs are, you know, kind of valuable. Yeah, it was not a lot of them. I think that was that was my strat with the pipe yeah. bombs. <laughs> I just think you're was crazy, like, and then I sound like, wait, no, this is huge. <laughs> they can save so much time. Yeah. And then we were like, wait, we need those pipe bombs. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, okay, there's a few different strat changes over time that we've had. Uh, trying to, you know, lab with different weapons, different, you know, ammo types, stuff like that. Yeah, the route has seen a lot of change, uh, and a strat's yeah. change, so it does the route around it. Um, and it's even happened as recent as like the last month where we've adjusted certain routing to 
make uh, like Miranda faster, for example. The new oh. Miranda is insane. Yeah, it's. Uh, I won't be doing the new Miranda strat because I literally just discovered it last week. So, yeah, uh, I'm not going to be messing around with that. I'm yeah, going to be doing I can't the do old it either. strat. It's scary. <laughs> For marathons, I don't trust myself. <laughs> yeah, right. It's it's it. It can go really south, but nice. You're All right. right, now it's time for Urius. It's gonna be a lot of uh, shots, and I I apologize in advance for one of the shots. Yeah, it's <laughs> uh, so, it's necessary. Yeah, it actually is. So Urius here, um, this strat is uh, all these shots are intentionally placed. So one to the head, one to his arm, two to his head. You do one more to his head, one to another area, and then two more to his head. The idea of that is we're staggering the damage to hit him. You see as he staggered right there, we actually staggered him out of summoning lichens. And so we force him to come down now. Kat's gonna do a few more shots. He's gonna let him jump down, turn, and then finish him off with uh, three more sniper shots and one grenade launcher shot to kill Urius. Easy peasy. Nice. There you go, and that's Urius. Nice job. One and done. <clears throat> yeah, Modders, Urius is uh, over Urius, please. <laughs> <laughs> the hardest part of Urius, I'd say, is uh, definitely the uh, the final three shots on the top when he's about to land because it's such a tightly timed window to get those three shots in. You don't have to do three shots uh, when when he's up top on the final ones, but. It's just so you don't have to do a fourth shot when he's down on the ground. So you might as well just squeeze those three shots in. But again, the window is really tight. So if you miss one of the shots or if you're not quick enough, he can jump right on your head. Yeah. Which obviously we do not want. So <laughs> you got to be fast. Your ace is not light. That is for sure. Mm -mm. He bonks. No, no. Yeah, he, uh, and especially uh, if he were to spawn in a bunch of lichens, that would have been pretty dangerous as well. Yeah. When he when he spawns in the lichens, I get so bummed out. I'm like, I know I did something wrong, but it's like, it's kind of a hectic fight, and the shots have to be really on point, so... Yeah. yeah. Ooh, Billy's being a good boy today. Thank you, Billy. Truly goaded. We love, we love Billy the goat. Boo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. That's so bad. Because <laughs> he's a dead goat. Come on, you know. It's oh, I got outrageous. it. <laughs> that was the problem, is that I understood the joke. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so uh, now we get to use our roses flasks. Yeah, um, we're going to be putting it into the chalice here. Uh, basically, uh, we're going to show off Ethan's ability to carry large things uh, without his hands. Because yeah. we're going to just take this. Thing's huge. Don't know where it goes, but it goes in his pockets. Must be busy. I am busy, Duke. I'm busy. There's a there's an audience, Duke. Say hello. <laughs> it's funny how Duke has all this idle dialogue. If you sort of like run past him, he says, "Oh, must not have seen me." Or <laughs> must, <laughs> must be not busy. have laid eyes on me. Then. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, he's just kind of bummed out that he doesn't get to talk to Ethan. The best one, hands down, is definitely the RE4 merchant reference. Oh my god, I love that. I, I found that oh, yeah. uh, for my first time when I was doing the demo uh, and I was just messing around in the Duke. And I went as soon as he said it, my heart was just like, ah, oh, yay! I was so excited. <laughs> yeah. He says, like, what are you buying? A friend of mine used to say something like that. <laughs> so good. It's a great reference. Yeah. I really, I'm really happy they uh, added a merchant again. I don't know what it is about merchants, but I, I love the merchants in these games, especially like the RE4 merchant is just so iconic. And then, you know, now we have a 2021 version of the merchant. Yeah. It's big and lovable. It's nice on a casual playthrough, and I think I like it especially with RE games, because like most of the time you're alone and the game is helpless, and then you have like a pseudo neutral friend, quote-unquote, who, who won't kill you when you see him, and it's kind of nice. <laughs> yeah. And he at least uh, gives us some fun dialogue along the way, whereas in the RE4 merchant, it was just like, hey, hey, hey. thank you. <laughs> thank you. What are you <laughs> buying? <laughs> what are you buying? What are you selling? <laughs> <laughs> Not enough cash. Not enough cash, stranger. The yeah. dude also has great dialogue if you shoot near him. 
Oh yeah, it's <laughs> he like claps. Really funny. He's like, nice shot. Excellent yeah, he'll, like, shot. He'll clap. He'll be like, that's a lovely weapon. All right, time to meet Magneto. I mean Heisenberg. My favorite lord. Unfortunately, we're going to skip him. I usually let this cutscene, that cutscene, play it's out because it's one of my scene. favorites. Oh yeah, it's, it's it is my favorite, hands down. I, I, it's like the really missed opportunity. They didn't actually let you choose to work with right? Heisenberg or not. But. Oh my god, I wish. I hope in the I hope in the DLC they actually allow the ability to work with Heisenberg because I really want to see how that plays that out. That alternate ending that'd be so interesting. Yeah. Yeah, because because Heisenberg is he basically says to Ethan, he's like, hey, listen, if you work with me, we, we can take down Miranda. And like, you know, I don't really care what happens after. And Ethan, you know, he's he's brazen. He's bold. He's not putting up with anybody's nonsense. So he he, he obviously denies it. But uh, yeah. I think everybody had the same thought. They were like, oh, is it going to give me the choice? Is it going to let me work with Heisenberg? That'd be so cool. Uh, even if it was a pseudo choice, I would take it. Yeah, kind of like kind of like RE seven pseudo choice of like Mia and Zoe, where right. it's like Although, it's a choice but not really. Yeah. It's, yeah, I was gonna say it's not really much of a choice in RE seven because even if you did pick Zoe, it's literally the same. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Same how it, everything plays out the same. The only difference is you fight Mia again, and, and then Mia's not on the plane on the this end. Sorry, up. spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I, I was really kind of like bummed out when there was no choice, but I hope that maybe in the DLC they'll add it. It'd be so cool. Alright, so now it's time for Factory. It's a lot of uh, red dots. Yeah. Red dots. And red dots boys and, behind uh, doors. Yeah. They love to put their boys behind the doors. Uh, so we are going to have to do a little bit of uh, duck dodge and weave, all that stuff. Yeah, the factory uh, was used to be the worst part of the game until we started using grenade launcher, which actually made it easier because the grenade launcher kind of owns everything here. The the problem with the factory is it introduces uh, a couple things that really ended up making us hate it. Uh, one being the one of the worst enemy types in the game called a soldat, and two, this guy. yeah, those fellas. And two is Mortal Kombat esque finishers from grabs that will have to. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if you get They're touched, like 15 so second grabs. It's pretty bad. Yeah, it's a cool every... animation, but man, they look do you like not death animations. Because they, they, yeah. they, 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 uh, they drill through Ethan's body, but he walks away after taking 200 damage. It's like, uh, okay. Yeah. I think it's because we got too used to RE7, where if Jack basically like grabs you in a certain fashion, it's game over. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. So maybe maybe we just got too used to that game. It's, it's funny. The the animation is so brutal, but the only real threat, it's not really health. It's just the time loss. <laughs> so you're not like bummed out that you're taking damage. You're just like, oh man, that's like 10 seconds right down the drain. Like, please. Yeah, it's yeah. It's, it's pretty bad. And now for the worst spot is oh, Bomb no. Central. Oh, Good cycles. Let's go. Oh. Oh, nice. Good. I don't trust. Yeah, that guy. That guy trusts yeah, a little no, bit. Yeah, the block. So yeah, these uh these gears can like really kind of just smash Ethan's head in a bit. Yeah, the and, hitbox for them is kind of uh, yeah. large. Um, Questionable so, at best. Yeah. Yeah, it's very um, easy to get hit in the head, or uh, if you get body blocked by a creature by any like at any point, it will throw off the timing. So it's just easier to wait a second or just shoot one of the monsters in the head so it doesn't grab you, and then you just carry on. Yeah. Easy. And sometimes you get bonked, like combo bonked, where you're just kind of stuck under the thing. And oh, yeah. Like, it's like a slapstick cartoon thing where Ethan's <laughs> just repeatedly <laughs> getting hit on the head. It's funny because you'll hear the enemies get bonked, too. Uh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, sometimes the enemies when they get bonked and it's if they're like body blocking you, they'll get bonked first, and you'll just see their body go absolutely fly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it raises your DA too. Yeah, so, <laughs> really silly, but yeah, uh, if an enemy will kill another enemy near you, that counts as a DA rise. Yep. All right. Please don't hit me, sir. Yeah, I hear you behind me. Factory is kind of non-stop. 
It's it's one of those, it's the part of the game where it kind of like amps up seemingly out of nowhere. It gets a little extreme. And there are some downtime moments, don't get me wrong. But you're on edge a lot of the time in the middle of a run in factory, especially if you're like on pace, because you can actually mess up almost everywhere. What? How did... What? I don't know. It, what? Small indie company, man. They didn't... <laughs> that doesn't even make sense. Did it I, only I hit the bottom two? I, <laughs> I have no I, idea. I have no idea how that happened. Yeah, so like I was saying, there's any point you could really just... Like, at any point, like... <laughs> <laughs> that kind of stuff can happen. Like that shot right there that just happened to Cat, like happened to me as well today. Yeah. It, it's 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 insane. Like, because you have to like be so precise with everything it, on surface level as a viewer, or if you don't run the game, it looks easy, but it isn't because you can't make a mistake. Like you're just not allowed to make a mistake. Hitboxes for those grenade launchers can and will just get in the way. Um, it's really unlucky when it happens, as you saw. Uh, it doesn't happen all the time, but yeah, it's just not fun when it does. So this one's pretty easy, but you can get that one from a little bit further, but because of how the other two went, I'm not chancing it. <laughs> yeah, totally fair. You usually lob it at the back wall, and I have such mixed results with that one. Yeah, every single time I try to shoot that one from a distance, it just doesn't hit any of them. And I'm yeah. like, all right, well. And, and then it's really bad because you have to reload the grenade launcher, or sometimes you don't have a grenade launcher round, and then the dude's on your tail. Yeah, and, and grenade launcher shots here are pretty important, so you don't want to yeah. be like wasting too many. So if you miss a shot, that's just sucks to suck you gotta go in with the pistol at that point because yep. you do need the grenade launcher shots mm -hmm. later uh so yeah you don't want to don't want to waste precious resources <laughs> it is, it is uh, a lot of time loss i tell you mm -hmm. experience i don't give a shit right. about your family drama oh ethan hostile all right so this is the fan room it's our biggest fan we gotta destroy it. As you do to your biggest fan. Yes. So those shots are, you can either get the hitbox really weirdly, or sometimes you don't get it. <laughs> I, I don't know. Sometimes it's like, I'm not even aiming at them and somehow I get the shots off. Another one. Mm -hmm. And these uh, these two fellows here are the time lost twins. Yeah, they, they are not pleasant. Thankfully, the way we go about this room, we don't ever really have to deal with them until the very last kind of second uh, where they're going to pop up here, unless they decide not to show up, which can happen sometimes. Oh, oh, oh the elevator oh. damn. Oh, my. What the heck? Oh, my goodness. All right, I'm a, all right we're fine. Yeah, so I uh, I was gonna say uh, on that ladder, <laughs> as you you're going still up, take damage. yeah, you can basically die as we just saw. Um, so that they almost have, killed me. Yeah, that was like really you went from, really like, crazy. Full to three hundred like instantly. Yeah, yeah, um, I was actually like one more shot from death. It was really really bad. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, I've been close. We're That's we're seeing everything. Before. Kat's doing a great job at showing us just all the possibilities for how literally this run. how bad this run can get. <laughs> this is no, how bad you're doing it can a great get. job, dude. This is it's not an easy run. It's definitely not an easy run. Yeah, you're great. We're doing and also you're fighting Capcom alongside of it, so it's like yeah, it's less yeah. the game and more just the the technical stuff sometimes. It's okay. But yeah, As, I haven't died. Uh, I don't yeah, know. No there's no deaths. So you know what we take those. Oh, I guess yeah. Long... I should say. Yeah, <laughs> yes, yes. Keep it open ended, just in case. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I do hope everybody is enjoying the run uh, thus far. I do apologize for the uh, technical issues. Unfortunately, that's out of my control. But I do apologize for that. But thank you, very much, uh, everyone, very much. Sorry, words are hard uh, for watching and stuff. Run's still going. Don't worry. We're, still <laughs> We're not in yet. We still I'm got a, we still got a lot of arcs in this anime. We got Transformers. <laughs> yeah, we haven't even got to the Gundams. Yeah, and then we, we got, got Call of Chris of Duty. <laughs> yeah, we got the Chris of Duty, of course. I'll stop it. I'll use Rose to kill Miranda. Miranda. The way he says Miranda is like 
uh, the thing about it is uh, we don't know why they did it like this and why they like it, it, obviously like the the voice actor for Heisenberg uh, is English. He's British. British. Yeah. yeah. So like, I'm not sure if it was intentionally done or if it's just a thing with his accent, but he says Miranda instead of Miranda, and almost every Miranda. single player noticed it like instantly, and then we're all like, did he just say Miranda? <laughs> so that's all we noticed now when he says yeah. Miranda. Miranda. I love I think, Miranda. So a lot of people, uh, Kat, is your last split Miranda? Uh, I think so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I think, think everybody's a lot of people, last split is yeah. Miranda. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people set their last split name to uh, Miranda just because <laughs> it's definitely what Heisenberg says. Of course, of course. All right. So now we're going to be going through the factory one more time uh, to go make a key. So this is for Sturm. Uh, we're going to be crafting another item at the uh, little area, the little hub area, I guess you could call it. It's dark. It's dark. Uh, <laughs> however, we're going to have to go through a ton of enemies beforehand, which eh, they can either be nice or they can be absolutely rude. I'm hoping they decide to be nice. So this guy, we're going to get him out of the way right now. I don't, I don't want him in here. I don't want him around me, although his... Crystal Heart, I hope I don't accidentally pick that up. <laughs> yeah, so um, since this is a uh, new game run, uh, if, in New Game Plus, you already have a bunch of stuff in your inventory, so you don't get prompts for picking up treasures. Uh, since this is new game, we get prompts for every treasure we pick up. Oh, so yeah. that's why Kat has been only picking up uh, like the necessary boss drop treasures and just running past all the regular enemy drop treasures, um, hopefully. Sometimes when you're trying to open a door, <laughs> there's a yeah, heart in the way. Yeah, you can see the crystal mechanical heart is just yeah. popping up on my screen. That's It's signifying the one below and this one right here. Yeah. Oh, you are taking your sweet time, huh, baby boy? All right, no worries. I'll go around and wait. All right. So now for the last buddy. This guy. So we're going to change our FPS to 30 here to yep. allow us to squeeze by I like that nice wow you got that so much better than I <laughs> I ever get that that's so good that's like the most consistent one that I usually get uh, I just hit him with a grenade and then go on to his, his his right side my left side see I just try and like cram in through the right side maybe I should I think I might have to adopt your strat <laughs> uh, I only do the right side if the guy before him hits me so if I go, if I get hit by the guy Oh, previous, to avoid the hit, true. Yeah, then he won't, uh, he won't hit me afterwards. Uh, the second guy won't hit me afterwards. He'll just basically just let me pass through. Nice. All right, now to Sturm. So I'm going to be placing down some landmines and throwing some pipe bombs, and then he should be dead. Blink and you miss it. <laughs> Yeah, so Kat's been picking up, uh, she started its stronghold picking up uh, metal scrap. And you need three metal scrap to this point in the game to make three pipe bombs to kill Storm with. Um, those are like some of the only like treasure slash craft tools that Kat picked up alongside gunpowder. Because that's, how, that's yeah. what you need to make the, the pipes. And now Storm's dead, got his heart to sell it later, and GG easy. Yes, yeah. so we're going to be needing a ton of money. Not like a crazy amount, but we do need quite a bit of money uh, for later on because we're going to have to fully, almost, basically almost fully upgrade the sniper or the final boss. Uh, so that's why we're very picky on which items we pick up or which treasures we pick up because there is a little bit of a pause and it pauses the game entirely when you go to pick up an item. Uh, but it doesn't pause IGT, so can be a lot of uh, big time waster if you choose to pick up certain ones. Yes. Yeah. All right. Time for Transformers. More than meets the eye, guys. Yep. In that yeah. cutscene, we uh, we said hi to Chris. Chris is like, yo, I fixed up this tank. Like, somehow Chris has this ability. I'm coming, um, And it's made of a metal polymer composite, which means that it is immune to Heisenberg's, uh, like, Magneto sort of abilities. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah. This was probably one of the most, like, of the game, 
Like, the whole part of it, like, there were some moments, it's like, hey, this is a little weird, maybe a little far-fetched, but that's oh, normal. I got, I got an achievement, let's <laughs> you go! You got an achievement, oh, let's go! <laughs> did you get one? Yeah. <laughs> you shoot off those guys, you get an achievement, it's kind of funny. I never got the achievement for that. Let's <laughs> go! Hey, this is the part of the game where we got into this, and we are like, there's no way we're actually about to use this to fight a boss, are we? And the answer was yes. Yeah. Um, so the, the little F, uh, FPS change there, it prevents you from getting knocked as far back. And we're actually going to use that on Heisenberg also. Um, and then there's a retry to just get into the fight immediately instead of having to wait for him to spawn and say some lines. Which also reloads your rocket, so it lets you use it right away at the start. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, so it's a pretty straightforward fight. Fortunately, he doesn't really get close until our rockets are ready anyway. And, uh... Nice. Yeah, so the goal is to uh, do a bunch of damage to him, hit him with the rocket to uh, shoot him across to the other side of the arena, and then we do a little bit more damage, usually two weak spots to go. There you go. And he's done. And now he will enter Slowly the center. Slowly go to where he needs to be. So it takes... If you have him in a specific spot, sometimes he'll roll take forever to roll his butt yeah. over to it. Minus 50 DKP. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're going to shoot in three, two, one. Shoot. And that's Heisenberg. Heisenberg's pretty quick. Uh, we still got a little bit left of Heisenberg, but it's basically done at this point. Yeah. I think the question everybody has is how does he know about Chris's boulder punching? Yeah, what's the lore yeah. there? Did him and Wesker have a chat or or what? What's going on? Uh, oh yeah, because there's like a whole if you there's like a whole lore dump section where you find out that uh, Miranda was kind of behind a lot of things from back in like the original game, uh, first Resident Evil. So I think they've known about Chris for some time. Yeah, the lore of, of like Miranda is um, Miranda was behind the original inspiration of Umbrella. Umbrella was made because of um, because of her and what she found with the mold and the Mega Mice and all that fun stuff. Spencer yeah. uh, made Umbrella based off of the, it's kind of I, I thought it was very cool how they tied in. The mold, right? Like RE7's mold in the Mega Mycetean Village to the start of the entire franchise. Right. Um, I, that plot twist was so good. Even yeah, though it it's just a lore circle. dump section. It's great. Yeah. I loved the full circle that it went to, you know, tie the story together from the first game to now the last game. Um, yeah. Hopefully not the last, but <laughs> <laughs> I doubt it. But you never know sometimes. The latest. The latest game, yeah, yes. and RE Nine, where we get to fight on a boat. Oh, I, if there's a boat section, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I, I'm going to love and hate it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the guy at the meeting finally got his wish, and he's like, "They're put, they're doing it, they're putting in the boat." And I'll go over the situation. Yes, get my the boat, boat fight. Yeah. All right, so now it is Call of Call of Duty. I mean, Chris of Duty. Where we're just gonna run around popping heads and uh, making things go boom, essentially. It's not that much of a hard area per se. Like tech, on a technical level, it's not hard. But on uh, Lycan's deciding to be nice, eh, it's a uh, it's up in the air. Yeah, some of these uh, Lycans we, we have to get pretty close to a few of them in a few spots, like such as right about now. Yeah, he like um, body blocked me. Yeah, and uh, they they can grab. Uh, and uh, you may notice Kat's doing a little thing between shots where she's blocking. And that actually uh, saves some time because there's a big slowdown when you shoot. Uh, and that was another little pause buffer just to get to the door quicker. Yeah, because sometimes the game will slow down the character, so we just pause buffer to bring the character to full speed. It's basically lose lose real time to gain uh, in-game time, essentially, or to save in-game time. Yes. 
But yeah, so we, we gotta do that a few more times. I'm hoping these guys play nice. Question mark? Yeah, these guys can uh, sometimes troll or be out of position. Nice. Quick draw, my draw. Yeah. And then we just start throwing nades willy nilly. You don't even look at him. Yeah. Yeah. Just don't don't even look at him. Just 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 sh shoot for the stars. <laughs> What's funny is all the guys behind you kind of just disappear after yeah. that. They're like, oh, well, that's my cue. Exit stage left. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> it's a little silly how that works, but even if you there's one guy in front of you, he'll just completely ignore you and run yeah. behind you. Um, right. So this laser, Zeke, how do you feel about this oh laser? Oh my dude? god, it's this la <laughs> This laser, uh, the the reference here is that I once lost a world record because this laser. I remember that. Very <laughs> unfortunate mechanics behind it, where if the laser is on anything that is not considered to be a part of that giant mega mice pile there, it will actually just straight up miss. And it's not like it misses and you get to a do over. Uh, well? Yeah, so. Cat just oh, expertly uh, demonstrating an example of yeah. the issue that we're talking about. Yeah, right there. Very well done. That's actually job, exactly Kat. what I was talking about right there. Now, she only did that to, to show us what, what it is. Yeah. Um, I've never had that happen to me before. That's so weird. I think yeah. you usually on the die on impact. Phase, by the way, I don't think it's going to break after this. Uh, yeah, I think you have one more. Maybe? The big armored lichens haven't spawned, so I imagine you have one more after this, though. Yep. Yeah. Uh, are you kidding me? So. Uh, it takes 30 seconds for the laser to recharge. For some reason, Lobo doesn't understand that he should be firing in the same spot until the target is eliminated. I don't know why. <laughs> I, I don't know. Lobo needs to be replaced on uh, on on the alpha team. Yeah, he goes the beta team for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so if you miss with this laser, which should really never happen, you have to wait 30 seconds for it to reload, uh, which is really unfortunate. And it's kind of it's it's not the yeah, it's it's not the most consistent not mechanic uh, at all. I'm gonna go ar around. Yeah. This is really awkward. Uh, <laughs> cue in. This never happened before. <laughs> oh, this is so bad. Be good. There we go. Yeah, basically what happens is the laser will clip on some geometry that isn't technically a part of this giant pile. And uh, sometimes it'll be like an arrow that a lightning shot. And yeah. the game just won't register the blast and it is an instant run killer. Well, and you do a bunch of damage, just not to the thing that you're supposed to be, you know? Because it'll kill lichens, but it won't do damage to the uh, Mega My Seat. And now we have Urias again for a third time. Yeah. Uh... Although, isn't this, uh, this is Urias' brother? It's not the same dude, is it? Uh, I think it is. Is it? Jeez. There's an opening in the roof. I got thrown off by the the laser. The uh, so this the thing about this Uriah fight on casual it's it's pretty straightforward. Is is cap three three grenades to bring himself down and then stagger him once he landed, and he'll actually stay staggered until he dies, uh, just like that. Uh, I think he's too far back. Pasta. Too far back. No, I think you're good. Yeah. All right, yeah. Perfect. Man, that was uh, talk about <laughs> unlucky run. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. The Chris section is like, uh, man. it's not hard tech on a technical level. Like I said, right. it's not hard. It's just the game sometimes just decides to bug out and not work correctly. So you're just kind of stuck twiddling your thumbs. It's the Mega My Seed. And mega Mega My Seed. Actually, mega she did seat. it on purpose as an expert demonstration of what it's like ah, when yes. that laser misses. Ah, exactly. yes, of course. That's exactly what I meant to do. Yes, yes. The full 4D experience of being a speedrunner in RE Village. <laughs> yeah. We didn't expect Accurate. So soon. Oh boy, but we're we're coming up to the end of the run very soon. We have one more boss left yeah. in us. And that will be, must be the, that lab. will be it. Miranda. Uh, Miranda. Well, that's the end of Chris's section. 
We uh, just got to see Mia there, but uh, unfortunately, we don't have time for Mia right now. So, <laughs> bye, Mia. Yeah, so Miranda has been Mia in a jail cell, and Ari seven starts with Mia in a jail cell. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say Miranda's been keeping Mia in a jail jail cell, and she's like, "Oh, not again!" Like this is how this is how Ari seven went. Even the yellow tape guy showed up and <laughs> put tape on the lock it. for her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gosh dang it! Not again with this jail cell. <laughs> These cutscenes that uh, Kat's skipping here are actually like really cool cutscenes uh, because that one that she just skipped, you're actually, uh, you see Evelyn. Evelyn comes back and basically like the, uh, spoiler alert, uh, uh, Ethan's been dead. Uh, ever since Ari 7 is more important he died uh, at the end of the guest house encounter with Jack Baker and he became molded uh, and that's why he does what he does. The assemblage of life and machine. I can feel Lord Heisenberg's All right, so now we're just going to uh, rapid fire our inventory here. Uh, I, no, 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 no. This simple modification can be done. It's three on the bottom, moment. right? Where's the four? Uh, you want to go to 10 ammo? Yeah. Hey, uh, so one more. Ammo capacity. Again! It froze again on her. Oh, no, dude. <laughs> what? Here? I've never seen it happen here. Uh, if yeah, it's multiple. This has here. never happened before. Just give it a moment. I'm probably way overestimated by game? now. <laughs> Duke, please. Dude. You uh, were supposed to be the one. Uh, I'm a little nervous. I'm a little nervous. I know it's like 20 this seconds every single extreme. time. Uh... Uh oh. Wow, the game really hated her today. Holy moly. This was brutal. This is bad. Yeah. Oh! Oh, you're back. It's worth mentioning, we can't hear you when that happens, actually. Discord just, like, died. Very awesome. Thanks, Duke. Uh, no, not for 10, 15 seconds or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I feel. Yeah. Screaming. We were. Sometimes. We were saying we've never seen it freeze at the Duke. Okay. I've seen it freeze at a few of the other spots that you saw, but not the Duke. That's yeah, so never, weird. That's that's definitely a first for sure. It's. We're getting there. Miranda. So Miranda is uh, a, a phased fight. She has like actually like five phases. But um, we're just going to blast. Like we're really <laughs> just going to like mouse one her until she dies. The trick here is to make sure you get her out of the Stark phase and nice. you kill her before she phases, which is going to happen right now. And that's it. Yep. Well done. That Miranda was perfect, I will say. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. Uh, yep. The game gives you infinite shooter. ammo here. <laughs> yeah, it's, that's at least a nice part, even though we had enough ammo to begin with. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Miranda is usually a lot harder, um, and she has a lot more to do in this section, but instead, uh, nope. And that's uh, time. All right. GG. Wow, three minutes over my PB. Yikes. Uh, the game was sabotaging. That was not a fair. <laughs> not a fair three show. Several times. I don't think it's yeah. too <laughs> Yeah, Capcom Yeah, is I apologize to, about that. I, I know I shouldn't, but more for just, uh, I, I hate it when that happens, but it's all good. Thank you, everybody, for, for watching Resident Evil Village. Um, and thank you, Agdysis, for having me on, as well as thank you to Niddle and Zeke for being excellent commentators. Thank you very much. Yeah, good job. This is a good run. Yeah. Yeah. Nice it, was, it was a lot of fun. I'm glad certain things went right, but unfortunate. If I d didn't lose all that time to the freezes, I probably would have been a lot closer to my actual time. But... It, 
Again, it's all good. Hey, my summer vest is down to a 131. Yo. Let's go. Let's go. It was a good run. Oh. And thanks for being able to do it. I know last time we uh, had some complications, so I'm glad you're able to do the, uh, go, the redemption run of this. Yes, I'm no longer feeling icky, so uh, That's always, uh, I feel a lot better now. Uh, if anyone wanted to and, find uh, you on Twitch, where can they find you? You can find me on twitch.tv forward slash catlink. Uh, it's basically catlink everywhere, YouTube, Twitter, and all that stuff. I do a lot of uh, horror game speed runs, mainly around uh, Resident Evil, or pretty much anything I'm feeling in the moment. I also do challenge runs and play a lot of weird, obscure horror games. Uh, it's kind of my jam, so if you're into that, there you go. Um, and yeah. That's uh, that's gonna be the end of that. Oh, 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 we're freezing. We're freezing. We're we're pausing. We're all right. What was the one thirty six fifty? Wow. All right. <laughs>